Add those together and cash has left Leeds United in all seasons but COVID impacted 2020. Driven by heavier spending in their Premier League spell, Leeds have overall spent <laughs> million over the decade. I quite like if, if in this circumstances when everyone goes crazy and... and Having fallen at the final hurdle for an immediate return to the Premier League, let's dive into the financial story of Leeds United. Flashback to 2014 and Leeds were stationed in the bottom half of the Championship. However, their lengthy spell in the second tier would come to an end in 2020, securing the Championship title and with it, a ticket back to the Premier League. Leeds' top flight tenure would last just three seasons though, with relegation in 2023. United finished the spell with playoff heartbreak, losing out at Wembley to Southampton. In the Ellen Road dugout, fans have witnessed a managerial merry-go-round since 2014. McDermott, Hockaday, Milinic, Redfern, Rosler, Evans, Monk, Christiansen, Heckingbottom, Bielsa, Marsh, Gracia, Allardyce, Farker. But what about off the pitch? What's happening behind the scenes? Revenue steadily grew during Leeds' championship run, but the clear step up in Premier League revenues is clear. Leeds delivered 190 million in 2023, the best performance of the decade. Within the division, that result put Leeds in the middle of the pack, but far behind the big six. So what fueled Leeds' top line performance? Let's dive into revenue streams. Match day revenues, including catering, delivered 36 million of revenue in 2023, a 22% increase on the prior year. Average attendances have steadily increased over the decade, with over 36,500 in 2023. Next, broadcasting revenues from the Premier League brought in 111.5 million, over 100 million more than the previous run in the Championship. 2024 will see a decrease though with relegation, but will be cushioned by parachute payments. Finally, commercial and retail revenues remain consistent with the prior year, delivering 18 and 24 million respectively. By league position, the usual separation between Premier League and Championship exists, and on average, Leeds delivered 183 million in their top flight spell, over five times that made in the Championship. It's a positive result. It's a positive result. Now let's dive into profits. This picture isn't as pretty. Leeds have made losses in all seasons, peaking at over 61 million in 2020's COVID-impacted promotion season. Despite significant upturns in revenue in the Premier League, bottom line losses have continued, with over 30 million in the last two seasons. And on average, losses in the Premier League have been greater than the Championship at 26 million. It's all about the basics. That's what it's always been about. It's about getting your basics right. So what's going on? Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Since 2016, the wage bill has steadily increased through promotion and leads three year spell in the Prem. 2023, the highest of the decade, with staff costs at 146 million. As a proportion of revenues, however, 2023 made up just 77%, far off the max with promotion, where this soared to 144%. So how do these staff costs translate onto points on the pitch? In the Championship, points cost about a million each in wages. But in the Premier League, volatility is much greater. 2021's top half finish cost under two million per point in wages. But relegation two years later was far more costly, soaring to almost five million a point. But after factoring in staff costs, the financial benefits of Premier League football are evident. Next up, operating costs. These have mirrored wages and steadily increasing over the decade. Though 2023's 42 million did represent a 1% decrease on the year before. Further details in this area are limited, but at EBITDA level, there's a clear distinction between the two divisions. Third, stadium and facilities. These have also grown consistently, reaching 6 million in 2023. 2021 and 22, though, were outliers, with the club recognizing credits regarding their operating leases. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. It's a tale of two divisions. In the Championship, Leeds made transfer profits more often than not from the sales of players such as Ross McCormack, Lewis Cook and Chris Wood. In the Premier League, that flips to heavy transfer costs. 
And in 2023, despite the big ticket sales of Rafinha and Calvin Phillips, the cumulative investments in the playing squad and a 20 million write down of previous fees resulted in a net 28 million cost. So these heavy transfer expenses have driven the losses in top flight. But what does this mean for financial fair play? Given the complexity in how COVID impacted years are assessed, maximum profit and sustainability PSR losses for this three year spell are 94 million. Starting with operating profit, we then must add interest and finance costs. Leads are then allowed to exclude certain expenses such as youth development and women's football, as well as specific adjustments arising from COVID and promotion. These aren't disclosed, so we are now in the realm of estimates. We're assuming 10 million of allowable expenses and a further 10 million in 2021 for COVID and other adjustments. Add this in and we get to Leeds PSR losses. 42 million over three years, well within the limit. But could there be problems in 2024? With relegation restricting maximum PSR losses to 83 million and 2021's profit no longer in the assessment period, Leeds would need to restrict 2024's losses to 33 million to avoid PSR breaches. With revenues likely reducing by 60 million as broadcasting revenues drop, the key question will be how much Leeds have been able to reduce the wage bill in the championship. If they've been able to offset that drop, the sales of Tyler Adams and Luis Sinistera may be sufficient. However, the situation could get tougher for Leeds in the championship next year as parachute payments decrease. Tener de corregir lo que está mal y mantener lo que está bien. And we will correct what, is, what was bad and try to keep the good things. Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dollar line items, saw steady outflows in the championship until 2020, followed by increased volatility in the Premier League. But over the decade, Leeds has spent just 6 million. But shifting back to transfer fees, it's a different story. Cash flipped in and out in the championship, but Leeds bet big to build out a team for the Premier League. Across these 10 seasons, 115 million of transfer cash exited Elland Road. On top of that, Leeds still owe almost 190 million in transfer fee cash, whilst only expecting 2 million more to come in. Add those together and cash has left Leeds United in all seasons but COVID impacted 2020. Driven by heavier spending in their Premier League spell, Leeds have overall spent 121 million over the decade. I quite like if, if in this circumstances when everyone goes crazy and, and... So how much funding has been required? Cash injections were steady until promotion, reaching 66 million. Having reached the Premier League, that funding increased, adding another 100 million over the next three years, taking the total funded over the last 10 years to 167 million. So as the first year of the 49ers Enterprises era comes to an end and parachute payments start to decrease, will Leeds United's owners back the club to mount another challenge for Premier League football? Or will they need to cash in on other stars to balance the books? Only time will tell.